Are tech conferences even worth it? It's kind of like a week in my life, if you may. And it's a long one, so please go ahead, put on your headphones and enjoy the movie. Thank you for watching. About to leave. I think I'm getting a little bit late. Game. Gotta get to the Come airport. I'm not really asking. We'll get I was a little bit worried about delays because the weather not looking too good. Just cleared up security. Time to finally get going. I finally got to my lounge access and uh, surprise, surprise. But I was able to charm my way in and I got to work while enjoying this delicious food. Goodness gracious, this hit the spot right before the flight. So I made my way through the flight to my seat and then had to grab the Absolute Essentials, had the MacBook Pro, the iPad Pro, as well as the Kindle for reading, and I was all set for the flight. I tried to be productive for a little bit, so I ended up reading on the Kindle, then did some work on my laptop, and then finally gave in and watched John Wick 3 on the flight. Finally got to Vegas, and now it was time for the festivities to begin. I took an Uber to my hotel room and guys, I cannot begin to explain to you this suite that I got. Oh my goodness, this is probably the best hotel room that I have ever stayed in. To give you guys a quick tour, there's a washing machine in here, a really nice bathroom, a full-fledged kitchen with a stove, a full-fledged fridge, and there is a hot tub right next to the king bed. This is a jetted tub, by the way. Fantastic. A good view out of the bedroom. You can literally go to sleep staring at the sphere. And wait for it, the kicker, there is a projector in the room and you can just press a button and the screen comes down and you can literally cast whatever you want. So I ended up watching an episode of Reacher before going to bed, literally just because I could. And then it was time to call it a night by staring into the sphere. I really have issues with hotel rooms simply because of the pillow situation. My neck always gets messed up. So I gotta start like doing Tylenols and everything. Oh, it's just terrible. The rest of the day, we're just gonna plan what I gotta do, what's on the schedule and everything like that. Okay, CES day one. Finally made it to Lenovo and uh, had a pretty interesting experience. They had these clothes set up there which were meant to be like futuristic tech clothes. And this thing was meant to basically pocket your tablet and then you get these drawstrings that come out. I don't know what you was doing there, but uh, yeah. <laughs> but the real question is, would you rock this? After the event, I decided to head back to the hotel just to relax for a little bit. Like anywhere I go, my wife, my mom, they'll all pack like a bunch of food to send with me. And honestly, I always complain when I'm at home, but when I'm at the hotel or I'm outside, man, this thing is a godsend. Then I spent some time catching up on some work, some emails, some editing, and of course some deep thought. And then it was time to head to the Samsung event. Thank you so much. The event itself was pretty cool. They had some new announcements there. Also, if you ever wondered, yes, there's a teleprompter at the back here. I was uh, I was just always curious about this. One of the things that they launched that I liked were these music frames, which are basically picture frames, but with speakers in them. They also had some really large TVs and transparent micro LED. So they placed a transparent LED in front of this regular TV, and it was giving this like 3D-like effect where it was displaying player stats and all sorts of other information. It looked really cool. After that, I took a look at some other TVs. Holy crap, this is 140 inches. And also I took a look at their G9 Odyssey monitor, which looks insane. Like I really wanna build a sim setup and I think this would look so cool. Like just look at the curvature on this monitor. Finally, I headed for dinner with Carl and Andreas where we did a quick watch check, Speedmasters for the win. What can I say? Great taste, great mind. We were joined by Nick and Jan there for this well-recommended taco place. And then I ended up walking the streets to another dinner, yep. That's CES for you. And uh, there I met up with my friend, Kevin the Tech Ninja, which has been a long time coming. Long day, it's 12.50. So uh, we're going to go to sleep. But before we do that, we, got, we, gotta, we gotta fire up the jets, you know? We gotta, we gotta, just for a little bit at least. <laughs> All right, hot tub session done. 
It's time to knock out. Time right now is 151. Not too bad. Peace out. Today's CES events basically began in the evening, so I pretty much had the entire day to work on my current projects. Then it was finally time to get ready and get going. Next I made my way to the ASUS booth, which is the company that I actually partnered up with to come to CES. Oh, oh we're getting a vlog, we're getting a vlog. So we finally got to ASUS and look, I gotta talk to you guys about this because this is probably one of the most eye-catching laptops that I saw at the entire show. This is the ASUS ZenBook Duo and it's absolutely insane. It comes with two 14-inch screens featuring 3K 120Hz OLED touchscreen panels and it basically doubles the normal real estate that you would get from a traditional laptop. And then to top things off, it comes with this detachable wireless keyboard that you can magnetically attach back to the laptop and it just turns it into a traditional laptop when you need it. But when you wanna use both those screens, there's a built-in kickstand at the back that will keep the monitors planted. Oh, and you can also use this in portrait for endless Twitter scrolling. This honestly changes the game for productivity on the go and the options on how you can use this thing are endless. Then we went to another laptop which was a standout for me, which is the ROG Zephyrus G14 and G16. And now this is honestly one of the best looking gaming slash professional laptops out there. This thing is super sleek with its light up design, 40 series GPUs availability, G-Sync capable OLED displays and superior cooling. Honestly for a laptop that's this neat and good looking, especially that white one, it's deceptively powerful. All in all, I think a has really killed it this year and I'm really excited to get my hands on these ones for review. If you want to check them out, they'll be linked in the description down below. And also let me know which one is your favorite. The next event is basically like a conference within a conference. It's called Pepcom and it happens like a night before CES and, and this is where a lot of the networking actually happens. It's a much smaller crowd and it's much easier for you to actually network. There's also free food by the way, which is kind of cool. But yeah, got to see a whole bunch of cool products here. After which I headed to this private Qualcomm dinner and then back to the hotel. Today was a long day. I'm going to call it a night. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're in the big leagues now. CES has officially begun. I gotta say, entering the actual show floor and they basically had several different halls. There's like Northwest, Southeast and multiple locations as well. So this is just one of them. And goodness gracious, this place is huge. It's probably the biggest event thing that I've ever been to. So I decided to walk around for a bit, checked out some pool robots, robotic snowblowers. Also saw this big road cleaning robot have a mishap. There's some drone soccer. There were tons of vehicles as well on the showroom floor, including this super futuristic car by Honda, which actually had screens and headrests and the ultimate future family mobile. I also was really interested in these electric motorcycles by Verge. Then I had to get to the Hisense booth for my private tour, at which point I noticed there was a crowd gathering around. Apparently there's two famous NBA players here. Uh, who are these guys again? Either way, I got a picture with them and some autographs. And then it was time to check out what Hisense had in store. Then I met up with the PR rep who took me around and showed me some of the TVs that Hisense has. And I gotta say, I was very impressed. They look fantastic. And these short throw laser projectors, which look pretty much like TV screens. It was it was kind of surreal. I saw disappearing TVs and also this really cool concept where there was a projector in a car. I mean, I, I think that would be kind of cool. Then I headed on over to the outdoor portion of CES, which had Google as well as Kia, which I really wanted to check out. Man, Kia has some really nice looking cars and I think they've done a great job with the styling on these. The Kia EV9 especially looks fantastic. The rear lights, the front headlights, everything looks so well made. So I wrapped up and it was time to head to the next event. But I gotta say, the coolest thing about CES is being able to meet all of my friends. Okay, my buddy Patrick just said he's nearby here, so we're gonna try to go find him. Did you get a permit, by the way? For the guns? Yeah! <laughs> Let me say, you say something for the public. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Stand off. <laughs> 
Easy. But hands down, the coolest thing about CES was getting to meet all of your friends again and people that you've just known from online for so long. It almost feels like you've you've known them your whole life. So then I had these custom donuts and then it was time to head to a private dinner with the Asus, which was fantastic. This was Gordon Ramsay's kitchen and the dishes were really good. I then caught an Uber home and that, my friends, brings day four to an end. I woke up today, I got a bit of a migraine, so have some meetings, but ended up having to push them a little bit. I have to grab lunch now because I'm out of like all the stuff that I'd pack. I wanted to try this place called Dave's Hot Chicken because it's like halal, and it's, apparently it's really good. So I uber eated it, and this thing, nobody's literally going to pick this food up. Five different Ubers have canceled it already. Finally, some guy named Hayes is coming through, okay? He's going up to pick up my order, and I just noticed, look what he's driving. He's, he's driving a Porsche Cayenne. Uber drivers here are like huge ballers. Then I made my way over to the show floor again. I had a meeting with the LG PR rep and they also had these invisible LED TVs. Looks like that is a trend going forward. But what I really liked about their display was that they actually showed what the benefits of this are and like what are the use cases because sometimes you just see this tech and you're like, oh man, this is so cool, but you don't know what to do with it. Like for example here, using it as a shop front, this is actually really cool. And you can always switch it back to a regular TV and this black screen comes out. I also saw some other cool lap designs they had like this screen in a briefcase there was this insane tv tunnel with like curved screens all around you led displays that would go on bottom of swimming pools luxury camping vans fit for batman and concepts for screens that they're working for to come inside cars and then i took this underground tesla tunnel which basically took me to another hall for ces here i met with the pr for john deere who showed me the technological advancements that they've been working on to help farmers with the help of cameras and sensors and ai technology they're able to not only make better informed decisions but have less wastage and also be able to track the clothing all the way back to where it was farmed. This was really cool for me because stuff like this is tech that actually matters. After which I headed to this private party by Nanoleaf where they showed off some of their new lights and then it was time to go to this like insane 20 course meal with YouTube. This was really fun and that's the thing about CES, right? It's all about these side quests. In any case, I wrapped it up and it was time to call it a night. Yeah, I'm starting to get a little bit tired. <laughs> I'm gonna start speeding this up. So I started the day with a tuna sub because you know what they say, sub a tuna sub a day keeps the doctor away. So we headed back to CES. This time I had the pleasure of hanging out with a PR for TCL and they kind of walked me through all of their product lines, including their TVs, which looked great. And I also saw for the first time this next paper technology, which is like this paper-like display that's kind of like e-ink, but with like color. Then I went over to the Sony booth where the PR rep showed off this car by Honda and Sony called Aphila, which looked really cool. They had a PlayStation exhibit here with this really cool Last of Us statue. Then I walked through some demos which showed off how far AI has actually come when it comes to cameras and equipment and filmmaking. This was really cool. In this example, AI is basically creating reflections and this entire scene around this car, even though he's not really there. I also saw software that can literally create a lifelike image of what it would look like to be at a location. And then Sony took me inside this room where they created this entire interactive experience where you could interact with the environment below you and around you it was really cool you could feel things you could hear things and it was just a great experience overall oh and it was also ghostbusters themes which made it extra cool and then it was time to inaugurate the annual steak dinner at the end of ces with a bunch of my youtube friends this was really good steak was great and that brings a fantastic end to a fantastic day And that, my friends, is a conclusion to CES. It's been a heck of a long week. What you don't hear often is in this line of work with YouTube, it can be pretty isolating because you're alone quite a bit of the time. So going to events like this is always very refreshing because you really get to network and talk to people that are in your line of work and people in the industry and 
it's almost like a venting session also. <laughs> of course, by the time we got back home, we had a bunch of snow. And being in the US for one week, the first thing I had to do was get Tim Hortons. And then it was time to head home. If you guys watched all the way till the end, you guys are absolute legends. Please drop this emoji in the comment section down below so I can know who the real ones are. Thank you for joining me on this journey and I will see you guys in the next one.